good to me. How about you? Looks awesome. Hi, I'm Ralph Gallagher. And I'm Dave Carlberg. Urging you to always shop at your local Ravex Motorsports and always buy fly helmets. My role is creating Ravex and the Freestyle Tour. I'm making phone calls all the time to try to get more sponsors and more help to get these guys to where they need to be. It's really like everybody has their own part in this and I'm proud of my part. Basically, the, the Outer Limits Tour started from us hitting ramps for fun. You know, nobody really got paid. We'd travel, Ravex would pay for our travel and you know, we'd drive around and, and do shows. And, and then Trapper from Mission Trailers got involved. And he said, hey, I want this to grow. Here's a little bit of money so that you guys can, can get a little paycheck after the weekend's over and go have some fun. Um, since Fresh the Tour, I mean, this last year we picked up the East Coast Snowcross Series. That was big. You'll see guys, you know, that just show up with their trailer and their sled and go race the trail class or the sport class. And I think that's awesome. And that's what the sport's all about. I lost affection because I'm lost and so affected by the choice of all concession. But when we were just a little younger, we had everything I've known now. We were just a little younger. Recently we started traveling around with the East Coast Snowcross Series, breaking away from doing standalone freestyle shows. We really appreciate East Coast Snowcross and what they've done for East Coast snowmobiling and racing and keeping everything going strong. The Outer Limits Tour last year was my first tour. And, uh, you know, obviously we're going to continue that this year. It should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. The crowds are awesome. I mean, I don't, to me, there's no better feeling than rolling in and just trying to put on a good show for people. Uh, uh. Our tour is a little different because uh, I've seen other freestyle shows before and they, uh, they do a good job, but we try to incorporate the crowd. I mean, the crowd's there to see you and practice anytime you want, but you know, when you go to demo, you're there to try to get the crowd into it. If it wasn't for the crowd, we wouldn't be doing this. Madness the magnet keeps attracting me, me. I try to run, but see I'm not that fast. I think I'm first, but surely finish last, last. Cause day and night, the lonely stoner seems to free his mind at night. He's all alone through the day and night. The lonely loner seems to free his mind at night. At, at, at night, day and night. The whole freestyle thing, every time before I ride freestyle, I just, my stomach's in knots. It's just crazy. First hit, you get those butterflies and you hit the ramp and you just, the second you come off the ramp, you know, all right, everything's good, you know, we're, we're ready to go. Jewels like paraphernalia. like paraphernalia. This time is the time that I won't go back. Shattered pieces of my life I will never get back. And I'm gonna write these rhymes and try to pull my attack. And you can contemplate your fate and try to make up for what you lack. This time is the time that I won't go back. Shattered pieces of my life I will never get back. And I'm gonna write these rhymes and try to pull my attack. And you can contemplate your fate and try to make up for what you lack. Trying to get that feeling of that fresh new flesh. Because I'm stuck inside a phase. She left me a mess. Most of these girls just don't strike me as very interesting, I guess. And I catch a few in passing, but I always let them go. And I meet a lot of women, you know, rocking all these shows. And I'm a little bit of a flirt, just in case you didn't know. Just trying to make shit happen and get back up on the road. But it's hard to concentrate on rapping when your soul's been put on hold. And I tried to add the line, but I'm just not getting through. Sometimes it rains for days before the skies turn blue. So I'm walking with an umbrella, just trying to do what I do. With my blood alcohol level described as shooting through the roof. Constant cannabis keeps me captive. When I'm not reacting to your acts of passion and your petty actions when I'm out relaxed Catch me laughing cause I won't give you the satisfaction to see me nasty When you walk right past me man I hope you think I'm happy This time is the time that I won't go back Shattered pieces of my life I will never get back And I'ma write these rhymes and try to pull my attack And you can contemplate your fate and try to make up for what you lack This time is the time that I won't go back Shattered pieces of my life I will never Joe McLafferty, 17 years old. I'm from Turner, Maine, and uh, I ride with the Ravex crew.
the opportunity to, to ramp snowmobiles with Ravex kind of just fell into my lap, really. And uh, I've had a good opportunity, and uh, with a lot of practice and hard work, I, I've come quite a ways, and, you know, I, I love it. I mean, I never thought I'd see myself riding freestyle snowmobiles in a million years, but I have no regrets. I love it, and I see myself doing this for a long time. Oh, okay. I saw Colt 45s on the X Games, and I, oh, I can try that. And so I was doing them, and I just floated off the sled, off the rear bumper, and never got back on in time. Landed on my left hip, uh, fractured my femur, busted my hip. So that put me out for the rest of the winter season, missed some shows, but getting back at it now. Hey, my name's Seth Bell. I'm 22 years old, from Waterford, Maine, and I'm a farmer. <laughs> Having my brother around, it's great actually. Uh, see, we hang out every weekend at shows. I mean, we're working all week. We just, he does a trick, and I'll do, have to do the trick, and just keep pushing each other further and further. And that's how we've always progressed. Uh, I'm Brandon Bell, I'm 24 years old. I'm from uh, New Gloucester, Maine. And when I'm not riding snowmobiles, I'm an outboard and stern driving mechanic. I'm just an average Joe with a simple life. No American idol, but I get by. Wish I could tour with fifth wheel bus. Back to the real world, time to wake up, film any freeze the land with big brothers. Bad to me. I got a blind date with destiny. A Mexican with an amazing race I get to be. Must stay out wickedly perfect. You're not a factor making me nervous. I'm a survivor, collapse on a planet deserting. That's the word like a ten thousand dollar pyramid scheme. Changing the face of the game like the swarm medical team. Lead troopers, the of supreme cruisers. Let your luck with sleep. Go home. The biggest loser, huh? I have the last lap. try to put a lot of effort into traveling, uh, you know, to our camp in, in Stratton, Maine, and, you know, having great backcountry weekends, you know, we'll drive two or three hours to get to a good spot. My family has a camp that's uh, two and a half hours north of the Portland area, and, uh, you know, you're spending fuel money to get up there, you know, this winter fuel was around four bucks a gallon, so you're dropping, you know, 100, 150 to get to camp and back. Have to stop and feel the rhythm and listening to the words. Love it when it makes them smile, even when it makes them hurt. Hurt a kid, broke on one of us. Yeah, it's a lot of work to get out to some of the places we go in the backcountry. But, I mean, you go out there and it's it's always a blast going out with your buddies and climbing and trying to high mark each other and digging each other out. I mean, there's nothing nothing better than the day of backcountry for me. Producer and a paycheck. I'm trying to do it indie, but everybody wants a cut. And I'm trying to make it through the blizzard, but I keep on getting stuck. And I drink away my pain, but then who would give a fuck? So I lay my life before you with every song that I touch. My friends and family inspire, so I thank you so much. And I'd like to thank my girl for the moments where she's been my my crutch. For every day my heart is beating, I'ma write a song. And for every night I stayed awake, I'm sleeping way too long. Every from the winter exposed and it's turning season. Well, we don't have a lot of risk of avalanches here in the beautiful state of Maine. However, um, we do have tree pockets, which I've never really had a good feel for until now when I was just driving along and all of a sudden my sled dropped down into an abyss. Full, you know, body height, standing up in this hole. We got a lot of things we have to do today, and uh, I might have just screwed up two hours of our day. And everything bad about I said about you guys, just forget about it for the next hour. A little spot that can slip underneath my nail. Hip hop's been my sail, but it's been windy as hell since I first set my cell. Harder to sleep at night because I'm fully awake. It's just a free for all. We'll go up there with eight or nine guys, you know, on the weekend, and just everybody's just out having fun. Backcountry, what you get, you know, the feeling you're going into. You know, spots that haven't been, no one's ridden on, you know, you don't even know what's coming up over the next hill. 
Uh, the back country is different than freestyle. You know, you ride ramps almost every weekend, and you get out in the back country when there's no snow down south, and uh, just ripping it up a little bit. It's a nice change. You didn't have to be here. thing is back into riding is it's worth the effort you know once you get out there and it's a fresh pow day and you're, you're you're ripping it up or even if it's a mashed potato day but you find this nice little roller or booter or you can shovel something in it's always rewarding once you get out there Bishop, 24 years old from Turner, Maine. I'm a goat farmer. Johnny Mac, 27. I do mostly all my riding in the back country. I have more fun stump bumping. I definitely want to keep it fun. I mean, just money, recognition, all that stuff is definitely a plus. But, I mean, I got into it for fun. I seen people doing it for money and getting a big head, and I kind of hated that. I want to make sure that never really happens to me. Fred Fuzzy Rasmussen, 27 years old, from Ludington, Michigan. Now, so literally, I'm everywhere. Hunting different shoes, still feel the need to cop a fresh repair. These moths check up, treat me like it's just my second year. For you better get prepared. Don't know about you, but all my rhymes is deadly here. Brick Park Market, where we kicking out the garbage. Sick bars, I've been a What I do for the Outer Limits tour. First things first, I usually set all the jumps, the landings up. That's like my main priority. It's just about who the hardest on my own. And if I get the chance to ride, I do a little ride with them too. My name's Travis Fopo, from Wyndham, Maine, I'm 28 years old. I had so much fun just kicking it and going in. Don't call me Malcolm if you didn't feel me then. And if you're lonely girl, I could be your only friend. You got 
got some shit to say, I suggest you hold it in. I'm a fool with it, bro. You can put it on my tab, run into my legs or numb. You know, a lot of people see these videos and see all these other riders and, and think that, uh, you know, they're, oh, it must be nice just to, you know, get all your stuff for free or whatever, you know, not pay for your own stuff. Everybody out there, you know, like I said, there's only a handful of people that, that don't. And a lot of those guys still pay for their own parts and, and stuff like that and fix their own messes. So I think it, the biggest thing is that, you know, we're all out there working nine to five, just like everybody else, working our day jobs to, uh, to, make, to make it happen and, uh, and live, live our dream. Just a pumpkin out to late tonight. If I fall, I will fall and break my seat onto your floor. I could fall. Joe McClafferty here. We're up here at my compound. I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour, show you guys what's up. Cause I'm rotten inside and out. Cause I'm rotten inside and down. Oh. One, two, three, four. And the compound has just been crucial to the development of the, the Outer Limits Tour. Joe's dad just hooked it up. I mean, you know, we ride there all winter, and once the snow starts to melt, um, it's all wood chipped up, so you know you don't get too muddy. It's got a nice cool down pit. Literally during the summer, you can just ride all day because your sled stays cool. Oh yeah, if we didn't have well, Joe Joe's house now here, if we didn't have this landing here, we wouldn't be able to practice. Uh, we've gone several different spots practicing. Joe's house now with this mint mint landing and ramp here, we can go side by side if we want to. And, Winter time, we got a little snow cross track, so and it's a sick setup, and hopefully, we can ride here for years to come. Now I'm at my house on the couch watching cartoons. You know how much you love it when you get it in abundance. Give a fuck about a budget when you always be the subject of discussion, but it's nothing when you stop and just say it all because you walking out in public and you hear them talking rubbish. I just want to ride through the city. What's going on? We're up here at the compound. This where it all goes down. Just about a year ago, it didn't look like this. We had a motocross track up there originally, got bored with that, and uh, ended up throwing a pretty good sized landing up, and uh, that's where we practice now. For the love of it, tell her if that she better bring her friends. And if she wanted an autograph, she better bring a pen. Yeah, the party never ends. This life is what I recommend. And if you gotta hope it for me, then she better be a 10. I ain't picky, but these girls be acting tricky when the situation's sticky and the liquor got them silly. But I take over the world when I'm on my Donald Trump. Bitch, look at all this money. Ain't that some shit? There's a lot more at stake than just going out and doing some tricks for a crowd. There's These guys are actually putting their lives and their health on the line to perform for these people. 
And Daryl is a prime example about just going out for the crowd. My name is Daryl Tate. I live in Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada. I'm 21 years old, and I love to shred my. Harness by the medicine, damn the heart is trash again Honestly it's frustrating, all the bitch is festering Hurts when no one's listening, that holds my pride, that holds my life They grip so tight throughout the night, I'll be alright Less said to be dead, done, lay my bed ahead And I'm the scene is straight faking, let them snitch to bacon I'm too busy money making, dudes playing, blues playing In the backdrop, I mean background, this is how it's going down Till the clock stops and the whack chops and truck stops Then they say they got props Wanna be players, fake as terror system error Cause I'm still alive at the speed of life Seen them hype my name and life The loser at life That would grab the mic the bites And one for a knife I mean one for a knife Let it be said and done in the setting sun As the morning come Let it be said and done in the setting sun As the morning comes I'm alive I'ma take my fucking time With my people on my side We just shine yeah, I know, like, after my accident, it was basically just, it was almost being reborn, you know, I just had to, like, I had to learn how to lift myself, I learned how to go to the bathroom, I had to learn how to be independent and just live for myself again. For myself, uh, I wasn't sure in the moment of what was happening with my sled. I just, I don't know, maybe an air pocket in the fuel line, who knows, but I guess um, afterwards, like, uh, Rovic, a friend, family friend of ours, went over and checked the sled, and I guess it was just low on fuel, so it's just rider's error, I guess you could say. For myself, um, I never really thought I'd never walk away from it, from a crash. You know, I thought I'd be in the hospital for a few months, and like, I get through and get back at it, but not once did I ever think I was never going to walk away from it. Uh, while I was going through the whole process of in the hospital and like going in through rehab, and like I had an incredible support network, like the whole northern Canada, all the small communities pulled together. They did fundraisers. My friends came down and visit with me. They visited my family, like my parents that were there, helped support them. As the doctors told me, I was paralyzed, but. I, I wasn't really conscious. I had to, when I came to, I had to ask the nurses, like basically, like, am I paralyzed? And they wouldn't give me a straight answer. I had to accept it for myself. I made a video I posted on YouTube. That's called My Past Life. Um, basically, it was just what I used to do, what I loved doing, and what I've accomplished. And basically, the next thing I wanted to put out was a video of what I am doing in the moment and what's going to happen in the future. What I love about snowmobiling is the connection with your friends when you're in the backcountry uh, or even ramping, the progression. Uh, right now we're kind of in the Process, finishing processes of building uh, a seat that's adapted to my snowmobile. Um, basically, we wanted a design to mimic what my legs used to do. So you hit a jump, you know, you land flat, you bend your knees. I don't have that functionality anymore, so we're going to mimic that with the suspension in the seat. And you know, your side hilling, you need to transfer your weight, you lean back and forth. Um, we made an axle position that pivots back and forth. It's just going to push my limits the way I used to. There's one thing I want people to know about me in this film, is that um, I love to ride. It's been part of my life. Uh, and, and basically, people thought this was gonna stop me, but it's not gonna stop. I'm gonna do whatever I can to keep, keep pushing the limits. 
Um, my name is Kevin Jellerson, 23 years old, from Sanford, Maine. I'm the first snowboarder to be on the Gravex team. After meeting Dave and Ralph, what they're trying to do is just huge for them because they're the first people to ever do anything like this. So, I mean, they pretty much are the originators, you know, of this, what could be a completely new way to look at extreme sports. been here before there's a war in my heart so my chest is a thorn it's been torn from the start the picture painted is warped the heart's aching and scarred music's the band-aid i'm too afraid i think i'm very dedicated to getting better and progressing so i definitely say that i'm i'm hard working I, you know if i have something i want to do i try to perfect it practicing at Joe's house and kind of floated away from it a little bit and uh, luckily I got far enough away from it where the sled didn't hit me but I went so far down that I landed on my arm and broke my humerus bone in half. My name is Eric St. John, 26 years old, I'm from Burlington, Vermont and I have a bionic arm. Two plates, 12 screws and one pin holding it together. This just made up perception that there's just tension between skiers, snowboarders, and snowmobilers, like the two winter sports. Completely what Saddleback 
prove to everybody and I think can prove to everyone in, in either industry is that we're all in it for the same exact reason. And the more we work together to grow our sports and to build our industries together, uh, the better off we're going to be. I think it's going to work out real well. Still got to build this kicker, but uh, we got plenty of sunlight left and uh, Joe's pretty good in the cat, so it should be awesome. So we're just trying to figure out the angles and get it right. And I'm the guinea pig on this one, so we'll see how this one goes. But I'm lost going uphill. I'm downhill kind of guy, but <laughs> I understand the whole pinned idea. That's yeah. for sure. I was a little nervous. I didn't. Uh, I didn't know what the whole snowboard and ski thing would would do. It ended up being really cool, and they were like super helpful helping us build jumps and shape jumps, making them look good, and ended up being one of my favorite events of the year. I was a little iffy at it at first, but I just figured I'd sack up and go for it, but that was money, that was so sick. Oh, now we gotta do it. Everybody was just stoked on everybody. I mean, you know, the skiers and snowboarders were stoked when they first started seeing us hit the snow hits, and then we saw them going big and just throwing down, you know, these local main guys just going out there and hucking it, you know. And I think it was we were just stoked on each other and what we were doing out there. One of the harder things was the timing, basically just getting the guys in the air at the same time because the snowboarders would come down at a certain speed, we'd be going up at a certain speed, so we'd had to, with a tow-in, so that was probably one of the one of the harder things, was just getting the timing lined up, but once we got that lined up, I mean, as you can see, the footage doesn't lie, I mean, it was just complete gnarliness. The first day was like trial and error. We built some jumps and we tore them down and we kind of, you know, changed some stuff, but when we showed up the next day, it was just like everything was ready to go. The groomer worked all night to get everything done, so when we showed up there, it was just like a whole new place. Showed up the second day, everybody was super pumped for it right off the bat, and it was pretty much night and day. I mean, it went from rollers and all that to 50 to 100 foot booters. Saddleback, you know, made it happen. So this is uh, 
big things to come this season at Saddleback for sure. And uh, I think, I mean, as a whole, the event was a complete success. Everybody realized that we're all in it for the same reason, and we all love love winter. It's just huge to see the two communities coming together. I think that's the biggest thing, and that's what we need to do is uh, stick together, and uh, we can make it happen. Today was the best. That <laughs> <laughs> one. was today. Today was fucking sick. Fucking bishop. That's our goat roper right there, folks. Bishop. You need a goat. She seems so distant, you can see in her eyes that she isn't there. Your voice not heard at all. <laughs> Feel awesome. Uh, there's no way I'd personally take a sled off any of that shit, but that's why we have our buddies that actually throw down and they're young and they can do crazy shit like that, but uh, sorry I'm saying shit so much. I think is it? I think somebody pooped right here, and I'm actually standing in that shit, so. <laughs> I uh, forget it, dude. I'm sweating, and I keep realizing that I'm going like this. I look like fucking Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Did you ever know that you cannot see her in the next room picking up his clothes to clean and finding condoms in his pants? Sorry, dude, you're busted.